Devil May Cry 5. Holy shit. I'm a huge fan of the series. I always have been. Um, well, uh, really, it started around Devil May Cry 3. I picked that up. Uh, I picked up Devil May Cry before then. Uh, I picked up Devil May Cry 3 on its original release, where everybody was bitching about how hard it was. Still managed to get through it, but it was really hard. Um, and I've loved the series ever since. I didn't really play a lot of Devil May Cry 4, um, but I, I played enough 3 to, to kind of counteract that. Uh, 4, for whatever reason, just didn't... I don't know. 4 was really interesting because I felt as though the gameplay was pretty damn good, but there was a lot of stuff around it I just didn't really enjoy. I didn't really enjoy the setting. I didn't really enjoy... Um, some of the characters, I didn't really, and there was something a little different about the gameplay that did rub me, I don't know, there's something about 3's gameplay that felt a little better. Um, so 5, uh, I've been, you know, I've been working with an old PS4 for a long time, and I finally upgraded to a PS5, and so I was waiting to play a lot of these games once I got a PS5, because, you know, I wanted to see them in the best quality. Um, and I've always I've been excited about Devil May Cry 5. I heard it was fantastic. I heard a lot of people say that they thought it was the best in the series. And while that excited me, I also wasn't really sure. Like, come on, how much can, how much more can they do with this series at this point? Like, it's it's Devil May Cry. I kind of know what I'm gonna get. Um, but it wasn't until I played it. I I got the the special edition here on the PS5. Uh, which is awesome. It's got so keep in mind this is my first time playing it, so I've got all the you know Virgil, all that stuff. That's all that comes with it, you know, right out of the gate. Um, wow, holy shit! This game is just ungodly, like in how fun it is, and how fucking cool it is, and how just satisfyingly. Uh, it's, it's 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 a game that when you really play it and you feel you know the the feel of the gameplay is so so strong and while yes it is a devil may cry game like you know like i mentioned before how much are they going to be able to really improve this it what they did is they basically just took everything that people love about devil may cry which is first and foremost the gameplay uh, second, the stylish action, like, you know, how stylish can the game be? And third, uh, the characters and, you know, in, in the settings and stuff like that. They took all that and just fucking shot it up to like 15. Like the gameplay feels incredible. It truly, truly does. It, it might be the best 3D action game as far as just feels goes i've ever played and when you look at videos of it and stuff it, it looks good and stuff but i'm telling you man like when you're playing this game it, it feels just like an extension of yourself you, you don't even feel like you're holding your controller you feel like you're truly controlling these characters like you know in a game like this as well it's so difficult because in 3d action games they're so hard to balance you know like it, it's so easy for these games to be broken or, or busted or, or something something just doesn't work right with them but there's something about double it, it's so well tuned it almost feels like I'm playing like a 2d game but it's like in a 3d space like you kind of get what I'm saying like you know with a 2d fighter there's so many more things you can do than with a 3d fighter because you know it's just control schemes are so different and generally I prefer 2d fighters because I like that control scheme better it gives me more accuracy in a lot of ways but it don't make cry five is so finely tuned like i said it feels like i'm playing something like 2d or something um so the gameplay is just fucking incredible uh the characters are wonderful everybody here is great it's so cool i i, I okay so along with the characters we'll go with the setting as well i infinitely enjoy this setting more than something like Devil May Cry 4. Um, I was not a fan of Devil May Cry 4's, like, kind of angelic setting. You know, it took place in the church. It was very kind of holy feeling. A lot a lot of it took place in the day. Basically, the entire thing took place in the day. Uh, stuff like that. That's actually kind of a reason why I'm not 
huge into Bayonetta either. I'm just, I don't know, I'm not, for some reason that kind of angelic stuff just doesn't really do a whole lot for me. Uh, Devil May Cry 5 setting does so much more for me. It's, it's much more of like a gritty, dark street level setting um, that I think complements the series so well. It reminds me a lot of Devil May Cry 3. And, um, you know, it just going through these crazy trees, going through these awesome streets, like, you know, going into, you know, weird ass like hellscapes, uh, going, you know, like it's it, it just it, and just darker, like everything's darker, a little bit more like neon lit, like, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I love it. I just love it. I think the characters are awesome. Nero has become so quickly. Uh, such a solid character in this franchise. It's so interesting. I remember back when Devil May Cry 4 was announced, I was so confused. I was like, who is this guy? Is he Dante? Like, what's going on? Because I was just, you know, this was a long time ago. I was just looking at pre-release. And I didn't. I, it took me so long to put together that he was actually a new character. Like, that was just kind of how um, news traveled at that time. You know, there was, it was, I don't know, it was a little bit more misinformation. Um, and like I said, I didn't actually play Devil May Cry 4 at release. I actually, for the first time, beat Devil May Cry 4 just a few months ago. I played it, but I never beat it in preparation to play Devil May Cry 5. Um, and I thought Nero was a good character in there, too. Like, surprisingly good. He's, uh, he's interesting because there it doesn't feel like there's a lot to him. And he just feels like he's like, hey, I'm a smartass. I'm Nero. But there's something about the way that he's portrayed and the writing he's given, it, it just works. Like, he's cool. Like, I like Nero, he's, he's, he's cool. Um, and in five, he's great. He truly feels like the main character. In a lot of ways, everything is kind of circling around him. I love the way they've done him. Dante, awesome. Uh, v, awesome. Uh, you know, and there will be spoilers here when it comes to this. Uh, you know, I should have mentioned that at the beginning, but I, I, by now, it seems like the team doesn't really care about spoilers because the special edition of Devil May Cry 5 just basically gives away... The special edition trailer of Devil May Cry 5 basically just gives away, like, a lot of major plot points. But either way, um, there's some characters that show up from previous games. We'll call them Virgil. That is also fucking awesome. Um, I thought the story was solid. I thought the story was really good. I... I'd, I'd say it's about on par with like Devil May Cry 3, uh, if not maybe a little less so. I think that the story was shot and um, and presented in a more engaging way than Devil May Cry 3. I mean, there's some really cool shots in, in this in this game. It's very cinematic. Um, I think there's some really impressive work in that department here. So I think in that regard it's a little bit better the devil may cry 3 uh but i think maybe the general story of devil may cry 3 was a little bit better it also didn't help that i had some you know spoilers as far as going into devil may cry 5 on what was going to happen on certain things so some moments were a little less impactful um but it was still cool like it was very engaging i thought it was mysterious enough to keep me interested i was like i'm pretty sure i know what's going to happen here but i still want to see it happen uh the characters were great and you know all that stuff it was, it was just good stuff. Dante is awesome. I love I love this version of Dante. He's, he's, he's really, really cool. Um, and the, the coolness factor, that's such an important part of Don't May Cry. So I don't know if, if you've been watching my channel for a while. Oh, God help you if you have. It's been like 15 years now. But I am a huge fan of stylish action in video games. I mean, I... I mean... You know, I'll be real here. I mean, one of the big reasons why I started doing Let's Plays is I I kind of like to play games to show off. Like, you know, I like to I like to show what I can do in games. And I feel like there's no better demonstration of that than a game with fine-tuned styles of action. Like, I love, I mean, of course, Beautiful Joe, I've, I've listed before as my favorite game of all time. It's actually not my favorite game of all time. It's, it's about top five my favorite game of all time is metroid prime um but i i just adore them like it, it's it's truly a special part for me and you can make finely tuned gameplay all you want that's great you know and if devil may cry 5 had that that would be enough but what they throw on top of it is just this unbelievable sense of style like not only to the moves and and 
you know, everything about the action just look and feel so cool. But getting your stylish gauge higher has never been more engaging and never been more fucking awesome and never been more fun. Like, so they use this tactic that I'm a huge sucker for. I'm, I'm a huge sucker for when music is used correctly in action games. Uh, and they use this tactic that I like to call the Metal Gear Rising tactic, which is when you get to a certain point and you're doing well enough, in Metal Gear Rising it happened generally when you hit a certain point in a boss battle, the lyrics will kick in on a track. And on Devil May Cry 5, what they do is when you get to the S rank in your stylish uh, meter, then the lyrics start kicking in on the track you're playing. So I'm sure you've all heard Devil Trigger at this point. I mean, there, there's lyrics beforehand, but the S rank gets you to like the next level of the lyrics. And I, I cannot tell you how many times, like I've, I've put probably about 25 hours into the game now. I can't wait to go back and play more. And e every, every hour I'm playing this game still, there is a moment where I either actually say, fuck yeah, out loud, or I, I say it internally. <laughs> like. Like, this is, I'm talking like just regular encounters with enemies. Like, you just get going so, so good, and, and you just really feel the groove, and then you hit you hit the S rank, and then you hear those lyrics kick in, and then you just, you start going even harder and harder, and then you got SSS rank, and, and then you're just like, ah, like, this is, this is the coolest shit in the world! And it's like a couple of, like, fucking basic-ass enemies, like Goombas, basically, you know? And... The music that they use, oh, it's so dope. It's so dope. I love the stylistic choice about basically everything in this game, and especially the music. It, it's just, it's so grimy. And gr it honestly reminds me a lot of, like, kind of the themes of, like, Nilo Angelo's theme in Double May Cry 1, which was, like, my favorite track from that, that game. And it's it just, it, it's so so awesome yeah it's a little like over it's over the top of course it's through bang bang pull my devil trigger like whatever but it works it totally totally works i'm a huge fan in particular of uh bury the light virgil's battle theme like if you can manage to get that to that third tier where he's actually doing you know basically like it, that's what it became it, it, it becomes never in a devil may cry game have I been more engaged with getting my style rank so high? And that's supposed to be the whole point of the game. But like, I literally, it's like, it's like I'm playing another game at a certain point. When I'm playing as like Virgil, and I've got the SS rank, and I'm like, I want to hold this just so I can get to the last tier of lyrics. Like, I, like basically, if you get to S rank, and then you can hold it for like, you know, a good 25 seconds past the second verse, which is really hard, and it depends on how many en uh, enemies you're fighting. You can actually get to the very last tier of the lyrics where, you know, they're like, Bury the light that's within me. And it's just, it becomes like another game itself where it's like, I want those lyrics. I want those lyrics. Like, give me that. Give me that. And if I hit it, I just I just start yelling. I just start yelling out loud. I'm just like, yeah! Uh, um, it just, honestly, yeah, I, I can't ramble on to it. Like, I cannot say how much I love this game. Like, this is literally every reason why I play a video game right here. And the second I started playing it within the first couple hours, honestly, I was like, I know this is going to end up being one of my favorite games of all time because... I'll tell you right now, it's my favorite Devil May Cry game, and Devil May Cry 3 was already in probably, like, my top 15 of all time. So, I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm thinking I would put this as, like, top 5, if not, like, 2 or 3. Like, I'm obsessed with this game. The only, the only game that I can't feel like it would 
straight up beat for me uh, is Metroid Prime just because it's just so special to me. But wow, I, I, I'm truly obsessed with this game. I cannot recommend it enough. If you like love action, love stylish action in particular, um, you're just you're just gonna be in love with this. It's just if you if, if you put in the time, you can you can do some oh you can do some unholy awesome stuff in this game. It is just so 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 fucking cool. And and literally uh, the only things I can think of that are a detriment to the game. I, I really I, honestly I have to think really hard. Is like every now and then. Uh, the camera will get hung up on something weird. Like, and I'm talking, this is really rare. This was a much more common problem with Devil May Cry, so I don't want you to, in previous Devil May Cry's, so I don't want you to think I'm just glossing over this, like, oh yeah, and it happens all the time. No, it's very rare. Like, I'm talking like, I'll play a game for three hours, and maybe once in that three hour period, it'll, I'll, the camera will get in a weird position. Um, also, I will say that some of the campaign levels do feel a little repetitive. Uh, there's definitely some levels where it just kind of feels like you're running through the same settings for quite a while. It's not as much of an issue with this game because really, I'm just wanting to get to the next fight anyway. So like, it's not that much of a problem. And I still enjoy the setting more than something like Devil May Cry 4. Um, but it, there's just, especially in a certain point of the game, it feels like, man, I've just been running through tree roots for like a really long time. <laughs> and and, and that, that does kick in. But other than that, like, I truly can't think of any faults of this game. I, I adore it. I love it so much. And I'm about to go play it right now. Like, I, I want to go play it right now. I just got it, like, four days ago. And I've just, like I said, I've already put about 25 hours into it. I think I'm a level 51 of the Bloody Palace with Virgil. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that going. Um, but I, I think Devil May Cry 5 is godlike. I think it's just unbelievably godlike. Um, I can't rec recommend it enough. And, uh... Yeah, it's just, it's just so, it's just so cool. Pull my, pull my fucking devil trigger. I'll take that. Thanks for watching this. I hope you liked it. I call this one shot reviews because they're just off the cuff reviews that I do in one shot. So yeah, if it didn't suck, let me know and I'll try to do some more.